Now, will the South African government finally get alleged state capture masterminds, Atul and Rajesh Gupta, in the dock? That seems to be the question. Uh, let's get some reaction now to the arrest in Dubai and find out where to from here. Joining us is the Defend Our Democracy campaign's Nicole Fritz. Nicole, thank you for your time and good morning to you. Uh, what was your initial reaction upon hearing of the arrest of, of the Gupta brothers? Good morning. Good morning to the viewers. Um, it's obviously, I think, an enormously positive development that there is now a real prospect that those who, as you say, have been the masterminds of uh, the state capture process in South Africa and have siphoned off billions um, from South African state-owned enterprises, um, from the coffers for their own personal enrichment, should now stand a real prospect of having to answer for their crimes um, in a South African court. Um, and that certainly is for the good. Now, and what does this mean then for, for South Africa? Because in as much as we're hearing that they've been arrested, South Africans understandably are keen to see what developments will transpire. But we saw government very cautiously uh, warning that this is quite a lengthy process. So, so what happens? What are the next steps then uh, for the South African government? Sure. I mean, understandably, I think the authorities here are going to want to to, to manage expectations. Um, and, and the fact is that the um, Gupta brothers are enormously wealthy, um, primarily as a, as a consequence of their ill deeds here in South Africa. And they um, can be expected to, to lure up and have the very best legal teams available to them. Um, and extradition is not necessarily a simple process. So I uh, anticipate that they will take every opportunity to, to challenge a proposed extradition process. Um, and it is very difficult at this point uh, in time to say how long um, and how contested that extradition process might be and when exactly we're likely to see the Gupta brothers um, here in, before a South African court. Yeah. Uh, Nicole, you did mention that, obviously, because they are indeed a wealthy family, they will explore all legal uh, you know, advice or, or routes available to them. Uh, can you just share with us some of them uh, with which, just to take note of, that they could um, explore what could they do on their side uh, legally to avoid coming to South Africa, avoiding uh, facing you know, the justice here in South Africa, or perhaps while they're even in Dubai, what, what legal uh, routes are available for them right now? Right. Well, I mean, I mean, one concern obviously is that if they are, are, are granted um, bail, that they might look to to skip the jurisdiction of the United Arab Emirates, and and then we would be back to square one. Um, the second, I mean, there are within the extradition process, right? A court will be looking. Um, in terms of specific legal requirements as to whether an extradition um, can be affected, um, it, as to, uh, you know, a court will assess whether um, the crimes for which they are wanted in South Africa the, um, uh, correspond to crimes um, that are in effect in the United Arab Emirates. Um, Again, I do not think that that would necessarily be a difficult hurdle. Um, it may be that the, um, the Gupta brothers would suggest and uh, seek to argue that the South African judicial process uh, would not afford them a fair trial, um, mm -hmm. that they, in fact, are being persecuted. Again, uh, my sense is that any uh, reasonable and, and realistic overview of the South African justice system will not bear that out. But you can certainly anticipate that uh, these types of arguments will be made in an attempt um, to avoid having to return to South Africa and stand before a court. Yeah. And just lastly, before I let you go, then how significant um, is them coming and how important is it, I suppose, is them coming, uh, you know, especially just after the state capture reports, uh, at least in their volumes, have been, you know, given and handed over to the prison. How important is it to hear the side of the Gupta brothers and their role or how they narrate the events that took place in as far as, you know, their allegations are, are concerned against them? Instead, Captain, given some closure uh, to South Africa with what happened during those years. Sure. And um, as you um, have indicated, we're still waiting for the final volumes in the Zonda Commission report. And we can anticipate that the Guptas will again emerge as kind of king figures um, in the systematic state capture process um, that uh, that took place. Um, I, I do think that it is enormously important um, quite aside from prosecution, that they provide an account to the South African public as to as to what, in fact, um, transpired. They are sources um, of uh, an 
incredibly important sources of, of information that is key to us understanding how uh, the state capture phenomenon evolved, um, uh, how it came to be so successful. Um, and I do think, you know, we as a country have invested so much time and resources now um, in the Zondo Commission and um, allied processes uh, attempting to redress the years of, of, of state capture, the hollowing out of our um, state um, institutions. Um, and that for the, the masterminds, the, the kingpins, the key figures mm. in this process, not to be, not to have to provide some form of accounting to South Africa to the South African public, I think would would compromise the um, and and actually to to some extent uh, I think would would take away from the the time the investment that we as a country and as people have made in trying to understand this process and hopefully putting in play mechanisms and protections to mean that we will not see um, state capture. Uh, of, of this type of, of, of intensity um, happen in our country again. Absolutely, because the lesson here is for it not to happen again, for state capture uh, not to occur again in the country. Nicole, thank you so much for speaking to me. Nicole, for speaking on behalf of, of course, uh, uh, Defend Our Democracy.